Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. Yeah, there I am. Well, happy Epiphany. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we, we, uh, we are so, so good with Easter, as we should be. And as we wrap up the, the Easter season, it's good, it's healthy to say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yeah. And then we get to Pentecost and we go, yeah, we're wearing red. The fire of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the church. And yet when it comes to ascension, did I say epiphany earlier? Yeah, boy, I'll tell you what. I need to borrow some of Pastor Dan's coffee pods in the morning. <laughs> When it comes to ascension, oh boy, oh boy. We sometimes oversimplify it. And we say, basically, well, Jesus said, I'll be back, so get to work. And while this is true, there's more. The reason Epiphany uh, was on my mind, I think, uh, the... Uh, poet laureate of the state of Nebraska, and we lived 13 years in Nebraska, a guy named William Clefcorn. He said that when you find the absolute heart of a situation, he called that an epiphany where you hit the heart of the bullseye, Right? Not just the bullseye, but the heart of the bullseye. And, and, and there is a heart of the bullseye in ascension that I want us to hit this morning. Christ's ascension into heaven signals nothing less than the completion of the story of redemption. Now the final movement of the story will come at the return of Christ... When he comes back, there's going to be a bodily resurrection of the living and the dead. We'll all stand before him. We'll all be judged. And those in Christ, will we need to fear being judged guilty? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We will stand not in our own strength. We'll stand in the strength of God and say, Thank you, God, that you have included me in your kingdom. The heavens and the earth will pass away. The old will cease to be and the new will come. There will be a new heaven, a new earth. Jerusalem will come out of the heavens dressed as a bride for her bridegroom Jesus. And God's people will live in a recreated world just like in paradise. We get to go back to Eden. And so during the 40 days between resurrection and ascension, Jesus taught his disciples. And I like to say that, that what, what he's doing is that he's teaching the new in the new covenant. They'd already heard and seen signs of the new. The new covenant in his blood in the Lord's Supper, which we'll celebrate. A tangible way that we can taste, touch, and feel that God really is with us. The temple court, uh, curtain was torn in two, signifying that we can go into the presence of God not with a sacrifice of our own, but with the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. All nations are included in God's plan of salvation, and that's just a partial list. There is a collision of covenants, a, a, a historical, um, you could call it really like a spiritual tidal wave that sweeps through this world where God's word is fulfilled. Luke said it this way in our gospel. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you when I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, 
and the Psalms. In other words, the Bible as they knew it with all these thousands of years of longing for a savior, for a, for a true godly king over God's people. It's all coming together. That's the importance of epiphany. I said it again. Ascension. <laughs> We're talking about the epiphany of ascension. Okay. As Jesus taught his disciples, there's, there's uh, all of the Gospels relate um, a, a number of, uh, of, of conversations, but in the Gospel of Luke, they're, they're coming back um, from a, a fishing trip and, and, and they're, they're unloading and they see this person, right? And the, and the text says that, there's, that, that they, they thought they knew who it was, but they were scared to say it, you know? It's like when you recognize somebody, you think you recognize somebody, and, and you're, but you're scared to go up and say hi, only to find out, you know, oops, I got that wrong. Do you hear that? Witnesses of the resurrection, they weren't quite sure about it still. They had some doubts. And Jesus says, touch me and see. A ghost does not stop by for Friday night fish fry. Right? And that's what he did. He had dinner with them. I've got flesh and bones. I'm real. I'm not a figment of your imagination. I'm not a spiritual or astral projection. I am your risen Savior. And that's foundational to this change from old to new covenant. And then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And here's what he said. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Wow! This is it. This is the message. This is what the church will be built on. No more temples, no more sacrifices, no more wondering whether or not you matter to God or whether God is pleased with you. That's all been settled. Then he said, you're witnesses of these things. And you will be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So during those 40 days, it's all about the certainty of the resurrection. It's all about the Holy Spirit opening their minds within the big story of fulfillment, confirming them as witnesses in the world. And, you know, when we say the Apostles' Creed in a few minutes, you're going to see it. Jesus, who was born of a virgin and became man, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell, and he had a little victory parade to tell the devil and all his rotten followers that they lost, and that death is destroyed. And, but then he's resurrected, and then he ascends into heaven. And he sits at the right hand of God the Father. And then there will come a time where he comes back again to judge the world. That's big. It's broad. It's amazing. You can see the entire history of the world hinging on this one thing. That Christ is risen from the dead and ascended. And we are now his voice, his hands, and his feet. And so we know three things. We know the resurrection is not a myth. We know that the Holy Spirit uses the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus to open our minds to the Scripture where we see promise after promise fulfilled. God's Word says that all the promises of God are yes in Christ Jesus. And we are his witnesses. The largeness of God's story cannot 
be underestimated. And when I thought about something to compare it to, I just wrestled with this all week with this message. What can I compare it to? And it finally dawned on me yesterday, there is no comparison. It's incomparable as our epistle lesson describes it. It's the greatness of God who befriended me and befriended you and put you into a, 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 a community of believers that makes a God-sized difference in the world. Set your hearts and minds on things above. Why? Because your, your hope and your inheritance are kept safe in heaven where rust and moth do not destroy. If you've seen my 16-year-old Honda Civic with the paint peeling off the hood, you get kind of a picture, right? Our treasure is not subject to decay. It is waiting for us. Set your hearts and your minds on things above because Jesus sits at the right side of God the Father and he is praying for you. He is praying for his church and no matter what's happening, no matter how dark it seems for you individually or for his church, in the end, we all win. In the end, it will be God's people who are left standing. In the end, there will be a new beginning and we will be in paradise. Set your hearts and minds on things above because Jesus will come again. And until then, we're in this in-between time, aren't we? And I sometimes wonder, you know, when we get into Pentecost, it's like... Nothing interesting really happens between June and November. And then, oh yeah, yeah, we got Advent. Now things are getting fun again, right? I sometimes wonder about the genius of the church calendar being set up because that long stretch of time from Pentecost Sunday to the end of the church year just before Thanksgiving, that long stretch of time is a time of waiting and being watchful and remembering that Jesus is going to come back and claim us as his own once again. So is ascension more than just, I'll be back and in the meantime get to work? I hope you can answer the question with a yes. And with the yes that God has placed on his promises through his son, I'll say it again, yes with an exclamation point. Ascension is a beautiful reminder to set our hearts and minds on things above. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.